Pull up in motor cash. I got a show today. It's all I'm trying to do. Hustle and motivate. Choppers are throw away. Hustle the overway. That's why they follow me, huh? They think I know the way. What's good, y'all? Hello. Kenneth Barry here. It's intern, serve. Intern serve. Touchdowns and tangents. This isn't a somber episode. I just felt like we really needed to come into Hustle and Motivate just for one more week. Yes. Um, and personally, that's the part of the song I wanted to play last week. So, yeah, please don't uh, flag this for copyright infringement because it's Nip and we all love Nip. But anyway, so Pete, he had to handle his business. So he's not here this week, but we are going to run through a bunch of stuff. He honestly gave an immaculate, like he, he put in an immaculate rundown. So shout out to Pete. We give each other a lot of shit, uh, as brothers do. Yes, you guys do. I didn't mean do. Excuse me. A yeah. lot. Like, a lot. And honestly, the fights that we have via text message, that honestly, I feel like if we were face-to-face, it wouldn't be a fight, because like, you'd be able to understand the tone in someone's voice when they said it. I feel like that's just how most of our fights start. It's like, somebody says something, and then somebody like takes offense to it. Mainly, I'm talking about myself a little bit, projecting yeah. just a little bit, just a smidget. But are you it, gonna miss it today? Nah, not really. Honestly, like I haven't had a day off in like a month, and I'm like four weeks away from graduation, and I'm so ready to quit one of my jobs. Uh, not the one that I get like 40 hours a week, but the one that I've worked there for like two and a half years. I'm dead ass tired. Like I'm ready for it to be over. Mm. I'm this close. I literally have no time. To do my homework or sleep. So I need my Mondays and Tuesdays back. But anyway. Um, even though I don't, I didn't get my Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I definitely. And not to steal from the get right. But um, I almost got left. Shit. Uh, this Antonio Brown situation. Between him and Juju Smith-Schuster. The pettiness. The sub-tweeting. The sub-posting. The pictures. Like honestly. Bruh. That shit is magical to me, personally. Um, I just want to say, I think it was Rick Ross who said it. When don't you know when idols become right? When idols become rivals, it's really interesting mm-hmm. because watching Juju Smith Schuster come from Long Beach Poly, so everybody thought he was gonna just always be a safety because he's smacking the hell out of people, to being one of the top athletes in the country. To pretty much working so hard as a freshman that he, they had to play him at receiver when everybody thought he was just going to be a shoe in that safety. The fact that he ended up becoming All-American wide receiver, makes it to the league, and then you see this Instagram post or Twitter pic that had uh, pretty much a DM of essentially a, you know, a beginning a DM from Juju Smith Schuster when he was still at USC, pretty much asking him, "Hey, what what can I do to take my game to the next level?" Now this was backlash from a tweet that Antonio Brown sent that was kind of a reaction to a post that Juju Smith Schuster had, pretty much saying that Ben Roethlisberger was a great teammate, this, that, and the third, and A B was like. I'm not going to take the high road on this one. I'm going to say what some of us were actually, and honestly what some of those memes have been calling out for a while. Uh, He pretty much tweeted out like, this boy fumbled away our playoff hopes, and he won team MVP. And he said some other stuff, but pretty much that was the gist of it. Like, that's what stung, that he's like, this dude really had the audacity one, I was getting all the double teams. Pretty much what he was saying. Like, I was the number one receiver. I got all the double teams. But this dude fumbles away our season and then gets voted team MVP. And if you really look back and think about it, Juju Smith-Schuster fumbled away their season. Um, Now, personally. So, is it 
I I was trying to follow. So like, so did he acknowledge the QB right for the Steelers? Uh, ben Roethlisberger, yeah, yes. pretty much. Said he's a t- I can't say his last name. That's why I said the QB. Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> shout out to Andrew Martinez. Shout out to the homie Andrew. He said Juju have a better career than AB. Andrew, go lay down. I know it's late on the East Coast, but I need you to go lay down. But that's um, wild. But did he like he shouted him out, but didn't shout out AB? So AB got offended, or did he like when he shouted out the QB? He also like dissed AB. See, here's the thing, and this is kind of nuanced, but it, it, the way he forced his way out of Pittsburgh, you kind of have to just know that there's going to be bad blood there. Right. And the fact that he was just the number one receiver for so long. And then Juju comes in, and Big Ben fed Juju. He forced the ball to Juju a lot. That's why he had over 100 receptions. He forced the ball to Juju a lot. Um, even when Antonio Brown was open. Now, there's a bunch of different layers to this because... Okay, I'm going to just read off the tweet because I really want people to really... I want people to marinate on this. Because at the time, Antonio Brown didn't say anything when all that turmoil on the team was happening in the Le'Veon Bell situation. But he tweeted, and I quote... And it was a picture of the 2018 Steelers' most valuable player, Juju Smith-Schuster. And he retweeted, uh, he quoted a retweet from Steelers' Steve. He said, he was replying to him. He said, emotion. Boy fumbled the whole postseason in the biggest game of the year. Apostrophe. Everyone went blind to busy making guys famous. Not enough reality these days. By the way, check the list. So pretty much, let's just say this. Antonio Brown won Team of VP for a hell of a lot of years for the Steelers. And the fact that Juju kind of won one, and yeah, he has a, less character issues, seen as a nicer guy, better team guy. It really just boiled down to people like Juju better, so they're going to take his side. And the Steelers' locker room, especially, I'm tired of bum-ass uh, Ramon Foster and Marquise Pouncey, they're still talking. They're like, any uh, beefs you have with current Steeler players, come to me or Marquise Pouncey, and we can handle it away from the media. And my thing is, where was all the synergy when Le'Veon Bell was on the team and y'all were raiding his locker publicly while he was trying to negotiate a bag for himself and his family? That's why the Steelers are fake, and that's why that team is just kind of soft because there's a lot of questionable manhood manhood choices that are going on. Mm. Like, you have all this smoke for Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell, but nobody's criticizing Ben. And also, we can't just admit that, yeah, like, Juju is that perfect distraction and the total opposite of A.B., but he's nowhere near the talent of an Antonio Brown. He was better coming out of college, but there there was one alpha on that team, and it was Antonio. Juju Smith was a great number two, but he wasn't there yet. Now, <clears throat> Juju went on to say, all I ever did was show that man love and respect from the moment I got to the league. I was genuinely happy for him, too, when he got traded to Oakland with a big contract, and now he takes shots at me on social media. Crazy how big that ego got to be to take shots at people who show you love, shaking my head. Now, he also takes your emotions off the internet. Again, which is interesting because Juju's had posts when he choked away the game about his emotions. And it was on the internet. So, it's a lot going on, drama-wise. I'm still Team AB, but I really think that him sharing that DM of Juju Smith-Schuster... When he was at USC, reaching out to him was kind of... That was trash. Like, it didn't do anything. Yeah. It was dumb. It's like, oh, you didn't... Like, yeah, you probably gave him some tips. We don't know if he even did. But that's just whack to do. It's like, it'd be one thing if, like, Michael Jordan was dropping... he said, say, yeah, Kobe used to be like, oh, Michael, I'm your biggest fan. Could you teach me how to be a better basketball player? Like... 
I think in the NBA, it would be looked at worse. But because it, it's the NFL and there's so many different positions and so right, many different people, right. it's kind of lame. And it's like, just in the real world, if you leak the DM like that to somebody, like let's say you're trying to get ahead in your field and someone just leaks a DM of when you were young and on the come up trying to get better. I think that would be petty. I think that's petty. Like, I don't think, I think that's like a low blow and I think it's kind of like an ego problem. Like, you just want to make yourself seem like this big guy, like, oh, I'm untouchable and everybody, you know, like, even this guy came up to me when he was younger and trying to look up to me. So, I mean, I think that was a low blow. I mean, he could have thrown shots, you know, any other way, but to bring that up and kind of like throw it in his face, it's like, yo, that's what anybody would do you know what i mean if you're on the come up so like why would you fault him for that wouldn't you want to encourage it but i like you said i think that was kind of a low blow so i mean it sounds petty it sounds like a lot of drama for it to be this like (laughs) sport this nfl manly sport it's kind of funny like (laughs) my twist (laughs) we're all just petty children at the end of Mm. the day but on the flip side of all that, Le'Veon Bell's uh, posting conversation we had with James Conner running back for the Steelers who eventually took his spot when he was gone, and they got mad love for each other. It's all good. It's just funny how that kind of works. Like, Antonio Brown had reason on the way out the door to be mad. Because, let's be honest, if you go back and look at a lot of the film, Big Ben lost some games with some costly, stupid, horrible plays. Just go look at the Jacksonville game. Antonio Brown almost single-handedly won them games and has Hall of Fame numbers right now. And he probably still has, like, another five years of being dominant. So, it's kind of sad. It's kind of whack that it's gone as far. But I'm still team Antonio Brown, and he's a Raider. So, this is kind of like when Hulk Hogan was in the NWO talking mad trash. I refuse to say the Bret Hart one. Because Bret Hart got attacked at the WWE Hall of Fame ceremony by some loser. And everybody hopped in the ring and beat his ass. It was hilarious. Like, all you see is Ronda Rousey's husband, Travis Brown. That dude's like 6'7". Just dog-pounding the guy's face into the mat. And, like, uh, Davey Boy, I think it was uh, Bret Hart's nephew or whatever. but Or son-in-law. Whatever. Something like that. Well, he's a member of the Hart family. He goes in and he starts, and he's the son of the British Bulldog, for those of y'all who are wrestling fans. He just pummels the guy's face. So, yeah. And also, no one likes to talk about um, Bret Hart's NW, WCW run because it was really terrible. Hopefully not like Antonio Brown's run in Oakland. Hopefully it's not really terrible. And hopefully it's not, like, really terrible. Uh, like, shit, I lost my train of thought. Hopefully, this uh, this episode isn't terrible. So, yeah. Anyway. On to the next topic. <sighs> Aaron Rodgers. We're going to save the, the NFL draft stuff for a little bit. But Aaron Rodgers, this was too good to pass up. In another episode of As NFL Teams Stay Petty, Aaron Rodgers comes out. He's playing with an injured MCL, a concussion. He's like, McCarthy should be respected. If I hated McCarthy so much, why did I resign? And pretty much he just says the same old tired, bitter players are taking shots at me yet again. Now, if the same people are taking shots at you after a long period of time, and there's some truth to the shots, is it petty serve? Say that one more time. I was trying to read the article. Say that one more time. No, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so if someone is throwing shots at you for a long time, mm-hmm. and they're in a the minority, mm-hmm. now you come out and say, like, look, y'all been taking shots at me forever. It's getting old. It's just bitter, and it's not true. But there's some truth to what they're saying, some of your detractors. At one point, is it just them being petty or is it you just...